Well, guys, go check out these cool flowers. Oh my god, it's bees! Snapchat. Well, after that epic intro, I need an epic topic, so give me 10 15 minutes to find something. I'll be back. Okay, so not really an epic topic, but it's been on my mind for the past 24 hours. How do you growth hack local elections? Um, I'm thinking of possibly running for the science party. They've invited me for the Cunningham Illawarra region. So I've always been a fan of minor parties, but I've never taken them seriously because they never get in. Like, never ever. Like, even the Greens party is still a minor party and they've been around for forever. In my electorate here, uh, the lady Sharon Bird, who's uh, the MP for Labour at the moment, she's really cool, I've met with her a few times, uh, but Labour has been a safe seat here for 65 out of the past 67 years. And so then you get that thing where like, you know, if they know it's a safe seat, there's no point putting any like, you know, new funding or new initiatives into that region, because they know they're going to win it anyway, so why entice people? Oh yeah, I probably should say, for those watching this outside Australia, we're currently in an election, um, and our election cycle pretty much goes for like, two months or something like that. It's not that drawn out thing the US has. And like the US, it's pretty much a two-party system. So we have Labour and Liberal. Labour is kind of like your Democrats, Liberal is kind of like your Republicans. And then we have minor parties. Now the minor parties this year are pretty cool. Like, um, so I'm probably going to run for Science Party. They're into like science and technology and education. There's other parties I really like as well. It's just I know a lot of mates in that and also running it as well. Other parties I really like is Online Direct Democracy. So they actually, uh, they have an app where they allow people to vote. Uh, Flux, which is kind of doing the same thing, but built more on a blockchain backend. Uh, Pirate Party and... So the question is, how do you make a dent in local politics? Like, you know, how do you actually either win the whole thing or just make a, you know, a huge chunk? I think you need to do it in a very different way to the way most people run their campaigns. I don't want to be doing that cliche bullshit of like handing out flyers with my face on it and like printing out posters with my face and like going to all these little town hall meetings and crap like that. That just seems... Because I mean, all the candidates do the exact same thing. They pretty much run the exact same race and they do the exact same kind of methodology um, just because that's what everyone does. And obviously the minor parties never get anywhere. Okay, in one of these videos I talked about Trump before, and the reason I think Trump has risen to power, to power? Oh god, <laughs> um, is because of attention and memes and just he's, you know, gets attention. So most of his attention was fueled by kind of like saying controversial shit and saying terrible shit and just having really bizarre policies, um, which then the media lap up. So obviously I wouldn't want to go down that path, but I think you can still do some kind of like grey area, kind of social and uh, regional hacks to hack the election in a, in a legal way. So one idea would be to scrape Facebook um, and all social media and really find the influencers in the local region and just start advertising to them through social media, like with that highly targeted demographic ads. That's actually something, if I ever wanted a job, um, I think it'd be cool to be a Facebook data scientist because there's just so much power and, and so much influence and so much uh, insights into that data, you know, for good or bad. Because Facebook can pretty much decide any election they wanted with the data they have. I'm sure they could just take like all the people in the Aurora um, and then just basically find the influencers. There might be like 100,000, maybe 10,000. Like, imagine if it was just 100 people. Imagine if you could just like, convince 100 people locally to endorse you and to really share your ideas and your, your policies and stuff like that. And that spreads so far there's enough to win. Next idea would be dank memes. Oh shit, what up? So me and my mate Meow had this idea once of starting a meme party where you would, you would start with... Yeah, you'd have no policies. Like, the policies would all be decided in memes and anyone could create and evolve those memes. That's actually something I like about the Fox party is because they don't have any policies. They're just, um, they're allowing everyone to vote kind of on each policy as you go along. Um, and same with online direct, direct democracy. And there's definitely pros and cons for that model. I mean, the cons are that you don't really have a direction, but the pros are that you're kind of trusting in the, the crowd and the bottom up rather than having rulers dominating and telling you what to do. I guess more random ideas. I could turn myself into a, a DAO, like a, a decentralized autonomous politician, uh, where I could have my own currency and people could pitch in. And by pitching in, they get a vote in what happens. So you would have to make that process super simple, not like the uh, the Ethereum DAO thing, because that was really complicated to buy it. Uh, maybe they like they buy a, a voting token for five bucks each. So that will kind of be like creating your own cryptocurrency to help fund the campaign, uh, but also by uh, every donation actually has a, a voting right, a voting kind of scale to it. So maybe you could create a simple pl platform or system where uh, for every five bucks you put in, or for every dank meme you make, or for every piece of content you share that's related to it, you get some voting rights, and so you get influence. It'd kind of be like taking the best of the science party with its kind of like, you know, base policies, which, which are pretty rational, reasonable policies, and then adding the flux layer on top of the spiders. And then back to that whole attention thing, like, um, I think a lot of local candidates, particularly here, are probably not using Facebook as well as they could be, um, and not understanding the power. <laughs> with a few of my starts, I've worked out how to, like, bring the conversion rate down really low for um, Facebook ads. And so what, what you can do is, like, you create a flywheel where for every dollar you spend, you get $2 back, which you can spend again. 
I've talked before about how in the future political campaigns are going to be pretty much run by AI, where every single piece of content, every single ad a politician runs will be adapted slightly to that individual to target their demographics. You can see that as an evil or a good thing. I mean, it's evil if you're manipulating them and they're not really knowing about it, but it's a good thing if you're able to reach them and they really understand what that, what, what resonates with that individual. Like another cool idea would be to make a chatbot where people can talk to it and they're kind of like, they're, while they're talking to that, that chatbot, we're learning about what they want in uh, local policies and politics and governments. I mean, the way politicians are meant to work is they're meant to basically just like take the aggregate of everyone's like opinions and point of views and what they want to see and what their issues are and then just make shit happen. Which is why ultimately they shouldn't really be a politician because you're like, uh, politicians are meant to be conduits for the citizens, but they're corrupted by their own like personal biases and passions and passions. So, okay, I could probably talk all day about this, clearly. How long has this video been going for? Thanks for watching all the way, by the way, if you have. Um, well, you have, because you're watching it now. Um, if you have ideas, send them to me, at Future.